Can you tell what's wrong with this brand new Mustang base? Well, it's impossible to do a setup on it. Why not? Well, I'll throw it on the bench and I'll show you. Wait, we can't do a setup on a brand new base? Well, we kind of can, but it just wouldn't be a good setup. And at Guitar Quackery, we only do good setups. Uh, so, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, a stringed instrument can only be as good as the strings you put on it. Makes sense, right? And then there's an even older old Chinese proverb that says, before you attempt a setup, you gotta put the right strings on. Well, that also makes sense. So, welcome back to Guitar Quackery. And uh, now let me just stop talking. Let me take you over to the shop and then I'll do some more talking. I have the bass on the bench. Let's have a quick look at it. It's a Mustang bass, uh, brand new. Okay, so uh, perhaps I can uh, go over the entire bass with a phone. Uh, I don't really like this uh, gap here, uh, but that's not the problem, okay? So um, it's a, a rear loading bridge, okay? This is important. Uh, some Mustang bases have uh, a strength through body design, uh, not this one, all right? So the problem is here at the headstock. Here you can see um, a bumblebee wrap. I call it a bumblebee wrap because the string used on this base is a 34 inch scale length string that was wrapped three times around the tuning post. And here you have a tapered part of the string tucked in like that. Okay. And that's potentially a problem. Uh, it's not just cosmetic. Um, I'll explain why. I have a, a fragment uh, from a uh, uh, from an old string. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, this part of the base, this part of the neck. Uh, perhaps I can uh, zoom in a little bit. As you can see. Uh, there's a thick part, and then uh, it gets thinner, okay? And the thin part was wrapped around the tuning post, okay? But here, we have a different situation. The thick part of the string is wrapped three times, and then we have the tapered part right here. And that's not good, right? So this um, part should be right behind the nut, like that, okay? Uh, that's how it should be. And like I said, it's not just cosmetic. Now, if I show you from this angle, you will see a little bit of a arching side effect, which is uh, caused by uh, this uh, break a severe break angle. So the 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 more break angle you have, if you look here, you can see how it lifts the string a little bit. Okay, that's a, a detail that's often missed. And now I will show you uh, through the microscope why that's important. So let me uh, have a look here. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the string. It, it wiggles inside of the string slot. So let me remove that string. Okay, very lightly. All right, and let's zoom in on this. So what we see here is a witness point at the bottom of the string slot. And you can see the witness point at the back end of the nut. 
and no witness point at the front, which means the string was seated at the back of the string slot. Now, if we put it back and uh, put some tension on it, let me zoom out. Now, I'll zoom out this way. Okay, so uh, if, if I push the string here, you can see a little bit of a string lift. Okay, so this changes the scale length of the string. So the string is actually vibrating from this point, not from this point. And it also wobbles inside of the string slot. That's just uh, one issue that can be caused by this kind of situation. But there are other issues as well. One of them is a string breakage, uh, which doesn't happen every time, but it can happen. I have a string from, a, you know, a, an old string from a, a base that I removed. I clipped off the ball end of the string. And here I have a repair vise. So let me put together a little jig, just like that. So uh, once again, uh, what we want to see is, is this, uh, the string wrapped here, not here. So if I uh, show you the other end of the string, the same string, and I put it inside of the vise, and now let's uh, let's do this. Let's bend the string. Okay, it just broke. Well, uh, that's a problem. So thick wound strings uh, can break if you try to bend them, uh, and that's another reason why uh, we don't want to bend them here. We we want to have a taper and then bend them here, right? The string will not break every time, um, but it will definitely be fatigued in a way that will um, possibly cause the string to break prematurely, okay, at the tuning post. Because remember, a tuning post does have this uh, part and you have then a severe bend here, but it can also bend around the tuning post. Now in this case, uh, they did bend the thinner part of the string, okay? Then it gets thicker around the tuning post, but I've seen these strings break here as well. All right. Now, um, I did get the proper uh, string set for the Mustang base with a rear loading bridge. And this is the proper string set if you want to use uh, round wound strings. I took them out of the pack and I have them on the bench. And uh, let's have a look at that. Uh, the strings are right here, and the most important string is the low E string, okay, which I am going to measure against the scale length. So this ball end is going to be uh, right behind the bridge once the string is installed, okay. So we want to go this way, and then we we want to look uh here and what we see here is in fact um the correct situation right so the thin part of the string will be wrapped around the tuning post 
and we don't want to wrap it too many times because we don't want to increase the break angle as discussed earlier so that's it I am going to remove these strings I'm going to uh, do a full setup on it I am going to fix the nut because it's a little bit higher uh, than it should be and uh, obviously I'll put the right strings on this base now one important uh, detail is um, the fact that this is a rear loading bridge on some Mustang bases you have a string through design which means some uh, extra part of the string will be used up at this end going through the body and in that case this will happen here if you uh, look at the situation you will see that the tapered part is going through the nut and that's not going to work obviously uh, so when uh, you buy strings for a Mustang base you have to know if you're buying strings for a string through body design or um, like in this case strung through the back of the bridge okay so we need the right strings uh, or things might not work out uh, now if it's a 30 inch uh, scale base you gotta put 30 inch scale strings on it but you need to know if it's a uh, a rear loading bridge or through the body because that's going to make a difference now I made a little uh, something for you so why don't I just show you this is a, a model uh, that represents uh, a wound string okay. the blue rubber band represents the core of the string and these segments are windings and this is basically a cross section of the string. Okay. Now this uh, will represent our tuning post. So now let's see what happens when you wind a string around the tuning post. As you can see, we're stretching the rubber band. Now a rubber band is elastic, so we can stretch it but a steel wire uh, is not as elastic as a rubber band and after a certain point it will break the thick base strings have a relatively uh, small diameter inner core and then they have two layers of windings which increases the distance between the tuning post and the actual core of the strain which is why it's stretching like this and it can break okay so now i hope this explained uh this strain breakage issue uh it doesn't break every time but um it can break as you are winding the string and if it doesn't break as you're winding the string, uh, it might break as you're playing on stage or wherever. Uh, so you really need to put the right strings on. I'll put a link below um, for the actual strings that I put on this actual base. And remember, this is a bridge that has a rear loading uh, design not through the body you will need a different set of strings if your Mustang base takes the strings through the body okay so now let me show you how to put the strings on well uh, we'll put the string on 
this is the most critical one. So I'll show you how to determine where to cut it before we uh, put it inside and how many times to wrap it, etc. So uh, we want to end up with uh, a tuning post in an about perhaps this position when uh, when the string is tuned to pitch. Uh, there will be some string stretching, so we want to back it up a little bit, perhaps this much, uh, to measure, okay? Uh, now, what we do is we, we take um, the unused portion of the string, um, and it's okay if this uh, tip is exposed like this, because it's still gonna hit the bottom, and we we kick it this way, and we wrap it around this much, okay? And kind of hold it tight. So now we place, we can place our thumb right here. And now, don't let go of this, right? Now we uh, straighten this part of the string so we can measure it. And once again, I want, don't want to let go of this uh, here. And now we, we place it against the tuning post again. And we kind of eyeball where this ends. And it ends, uh, well, a short distance from this tuning post. Uh, okay. Or we can uh, butt it up against the tuning post and measure it against here. So that's about the distance. So now we take the string, we uh, we put it over the saddle on the uh, uh, s at the saddle end, and we hold it tight. And here we are going to cut it a short distance from this tuning post, just like that. Now I know that some uh, texts recommend to bend the string first and then cut it, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna cut it. And now place it here, bend it like that, and tune it to pitch. Just like that. Now uh, go under and this is it. So now all that remains to be done is to tune this string to pitch. Don't stretch it too much, but I, I do just a little bit like this. And that's an E. And we ended up with only uh, this much wrapped around, so we don't have too much of a break angle. And this part is right here, right? Um, we'll put the other strings on, and then I'll work on the nut slots. I just want to show you one string. Oh, excuse me. Uh, guitar quackery. Oh, a uh, viewer wants me to show at least one more string. Uh, let me ask you something. Are you going to click like, share, and subscribe? Well, good. All right, then I'll show you one more string. Thanks, bye. Nah, all right. Okay, so let's do the A string. On the A string, we want to make sure we have sufficient break angle. Um, so this tuning post is further away from, from the nut than this one. Um, so uh, we're using the A string, uh, but this time, instead of going this way, we kick it this way and we wrap it around this much, okay? Once again, we place it like this, and the tension will bring this tuning post pretty much in this position, we hope, right? So once again, we place our thumb here, and now, once we straighten this, we'll be able to take a measurement. So now I can see that this is past the G tuning post. 
Okay, so when we uh, when we place our string on the saddle, uh, right on the other side of the base, now we go this way, and I am going to cut it past this tuning post right there. Okay, and once again, this time I am bending it in this direction like that. Make sure I'm not twisting the string, so release tension a little bit and just tune it to pitch. So this is where we want to end up, yeah? And this is now tuned to A. Once again, we ended up in pretty much the same position on these two tuning posts. These two strings are different because there's a string tree here, okay? So it's not that critical. In my opinion, it's actually too low. It should be raised up, but this is how it's made. So for now, we'll leave it this way. I really don't want to be showing you how to put strings on. You can figure out the other two. Uh, I do want to show you uh, some extra work that I had to do on this base. Um, I'm going to file the string slots. I will show you uh, how I'll file the uh, low E string, which is the most critical one. Uh, so this is my setup. I have a little bit of tape here protecting the... Um, the finish behind the knot. And uh, if I push the string down against the second fret, I'll show you. Uh, I want to maintain a little gap here, but right now that gap is simply too big. Uh, I use a dial indicator to measure the actual distance. So now um, I, I place the plunger on top of the string, push it down against the second fret, and now I push the string down against the first fret and the gap that remains uh, is measured to be about 18 one hundredths of a millimeter. Um, I want that gap to be much lower, uh, not higher than five one hundredths of a millimeter. I guess six would be acceptable. Yeah, it would be fine. Uh, so, um, I am going to use, so this is, this string is a, a 100 gauge string, and I'm going to use this file, which is uh, 105, okay? That's the size that's available. So uh, I'm going to release this string tension and remove it. And now um, I am going to look through the microscope at the actual string slot. So uh, here you see it, okay? And like I said, I wanna remove some material from the back end. Now, as you can see, um, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to see uh, what I'm doing uh, because everything is white. So uh, for this purpose, I use a mechanical pencil. This is a 0.3 millimeters and I can draw a little line inside at the bottom of the string slot just like that and this way I can see exactly where I'm removing um, the material when I file so here I hit it with the file at the back end first only okay So I'm holding it at an angle. Just like that. Okay. So now I can place the string back, clean up place it back and 
tone it to pitch. I tuned it to F a little bit above pitch, which is fine. And we want to measure this gap now. We want to see if it changed at all, even if I didn't hit it at the front, because we don't know if that string slot was actually straight. And also, there was a little bit of bulging of the string, probably because the back end was a little too high. So let's measure that. And yeah, so we took off a little bit uh, of this height, but I'm confident that we can just uh, go ahead and, and file it deeper. Uh, so here I'm holding it at an angle like that still to 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 make sure that I'm angling it. And as I go like this, it, it even tilts this way. All right. So this is what I'm doing with the file. OK, so I can clearly see that I am uh, removing material from the front, which is this powder and I am going to clean up like that place the string back and tune it to pitch and take another measurement I'm going to tune it to a, a little bit above pitch okay that's good practice so there's less sinking at this stage of the file uh, filing process Okay, so I can go lower, obviously. Okay, now I want to clean off the powder and take another measurement. This time I will tune it to pitch. Take a measurement. This is uh, much better, obviously. We got a little bit left to go. Uh, I'd rather not overdo it because, uh, you know, don't want to ruin the knot. So. So we're still too high. Now, uh, I want to make sure that the string is well seated at the back end, which is where I'll take uh, a, a smaller file. That's a 46 gauge file. And right now, I want to hit uh, the back end right here with a 46 gauge file, just that. So let me mark off the entire length and just hit the back end. With a smaller file. This way, the string will be seated nicely at the back end. Okay. Which uh, will increase 
the pressure here at the front, okay? Hopefully. So let's put the string back and tune it to pitch. So we are at five one hundredths of a millimeter. That's exactly what I wanted. I am going to follow the other three string slots and then finish the setup on this base. Yeah, man, you can't just do a setup no matter what. And in this case, I first had to put the right strings on the base. Okay, then I had to do a little touch up work like you just seen me do, and then a setup. Eh? Ah. What time is it? Oh, ah, it's getting late again. Uh, ah. So, uh, yeah, that's what it takes to make these videos. So, if you want, uh, you know, you can click the link below that says buy me a coffee. That'll keep me up at night editing. Uh, thank you. And yeah, we're not done yet. I'm gonna take you back to the shop. But I did want to say something. Uh, oh yeah, there's a Patreon link uh, you can click on and check it out. And you can buy some Guitar Quackery merch. And also, I'm going to put a link for the actual strings that I put on this actual bass. Which, I repeat, has a bridge with a rear loading design. Okay, so if you need strings for a string through Mustang bass, there are not going to be the same strings. Right, so keep that in mind. I'm not going to put a link for those because that can get messy. Uh, but check out Labella strings. All right. Back to the shop. That's it. Uh, done with the setup. <laughs> haven't played it much yet but uh what time is it it's almost 11 i think i'm gonna wrap it up for the night i hope this made sense uh at least some of it uh and i hope you picked up some useful information right uh this is all about sharing speaking of sharing make sure you click the link uh below to share the video thank you oh you can also uh copy the link to this video and share it on guitar forums right this way you share it with the community and i get to make more videos as well uh, speaking of more videos i already made a video about uh, the issue with the low e string on a bass guitar that's already been published so you should definitely check out that video what else? Uh, yeah, uh, you can click the link below that says buy me a coffee if you want to buy me a coffee. Thank you. And I guess I'll just see you next time.